Good morning and welcome to the What's Up London show. I'm your host, Jennifer Slay. I would like to first recognize and acknowledge the ancestors that came before me, allowing me to be here today. I also acknowledge that London is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, the Napawak, and Ottawandaran peoples, and that I am very fortunate to be able to call this land home. So today's show is very much a variety show. We're going to talk nature. We're gonna talk about cancer research. We're gonna talk about music and about saving animals. It is literally a show for everyone. Our first guest is the superintendent and conservation areas coordinator for the three conservation areas in and around London. You will be amazed at everything that there is to do. Let's meet Damien Schofield. Good morning, Damien, and welcome to the show. Thanks, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Awesome. So you are the superintendent and the conservation areas coordinator. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. I mean, and perhaps the, oh, sorry. As the coordinator, I look after the operation of the three operational parks we have here in our watershed. Okay. And where are the three parks? There's Fanshawe's here in London. Uh, Wildwood is up just on the edge of St. Mary's. And then Piddock is our third one. That's over on the, just the north side of Woodstock. Wonderful. And so for people who don't know, what is a conservation area? Yeah, conservation areas are basically, they're parcels of land. Um, what we do is our, we're watershed based our organization. So within our watershed, we have parcels of land that have been set aside for a certain amount of like preservation. Um, the, the three operational parks we have have the big reservoirs which were actually designed and they're operated for flood control purposes. So what they realized when they had these reservoirs created is there was opportunities for recreation to also take place at these locations. And that's how these came about. So it's kind of protective land. It's been set aside for recreational purposes, whether it's day use camping or whatever. Um, and so that people can enjoy the outdoors and experience nature. So who would be the ideal person to want to go to the conservation area? Um, you know, I mean, I could say anybody that has an interest in the outdoors and the environment, but I think realistically, the conservation areas are welcoming to anybody, um, especially I think the one thing we've really learned over COVID uh, the last two years is that people are just looking for a place where um, they can just go, it's quiet, a change from their reality, they can experience the outdoors, maybe see some wildlife, and, uh, you know, just try to recharge, and that's, I, I think everybody is looking for that to a degree nowadays and our conservation areas are the perfect setting for that. Definitely. So I was reading the list of things that you can do and I was amazed because I didn't know. Can you share with the with the viewers all of the different things that you can do over at the conservation area? Oh, sure. I mean, all three of our parks, I guess, like there's kind of two streams of activities. There's the camping. So we have seasonal campsites, but we also have overnight campsites for like, let's say the transitional people that maybe only want to come for one or two nights or maybe a week of holidays or something. And I mean, that's kind of ideal right now, you know, especially given the, perhaps the price of gas and people don't want to travel very far. You know, they come to a place like Fanshawe on the edge of a big city and have like a nature experience for the weekend or maybe, you know, a week or something, depending on what their holidays are. And then there's like the um, outdoor day user type stream of activity. And uh, what that would be is people want to come and maybe just want to go for a hike, bike ride, birding, maybe rent a canoe or kayak, or they have their own canoe and kayak, maybe do a little bit of fishing on the reservoir, um, all those types of activities. There's picnicking, playground equipment in our day use area. So there's lots of different types of things that could appeal to everybody. Wow, that is amazing. So it truly is like a getaway in your own backyard. Oh, totally. You know, the one thing, I mean, I've, this is my 18th season being based out of Fanshawe here in London. And uh, the one thing I love is how I could be in the big city of London. And then when you kind of cross the dam onto the north side where our campground and days, you kind of get lost in the, like, and with the wilderness almost. It's, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Nice. Okay. So is there anything new happening this season that hasn't been in previous seasons? Sure. I guess, you know, again, with COVID, we were restricted to some of our activities, volumes of people in that the last couple of years. So some of the big things this year, I mean, our campground, like we're able to open our pool again this year. Um, for some of our rental programs, like canoes and kayaks, we're able to offer more volume of canoes and kayaks on a daily basis that people can rent. Um, a few more campsites have opened up because we haven't had to space people as far apart. 
and that. So, I mean, those are probably some of the big highlights. And I guess our programming for patrons too, as far as stuff like bringing in some groups like the reptile people or the raptor people, um, our education staff doing some programming. Uh, those are things we'll be able to ramp more up to like what we would say would have been normal for us. So that's exciting for that. Wonderful. So if we want to, if somebody wants to go for the day, do they have to book time or is there a booking system or can yeah. they just show up? Nope. If they just want, they can just show up. What we have is uh, for like a day pass, it's $15 for a car and that's for the day. You know, if there's one person or five people can be in that car. And I mean, they from dawn to dusk, they have access. Also, if someone wants to frequently come to our parks, uh, they can get the seasons pass for $135. And again, for a whole year from now through into October, that would grant them dawn to dusk access as many times a day as they want to come here. So it's, it's a really good deal. It is. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Damien, for being here and for sharing this information. I'm sure that the parks are going to be flooded this year uh, with people just well, because, you know, we can be together again. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we were busy during COVID, but I think we'll be busier now that just it's a little more relaxed atmosphere, too, that people can come out to. So we're excited for that, for sure. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.